The rest of the crew are inside there setting up for the last shot of the day and I thought I'd just take a moment to pop outside and talk about some stuff and like show off my bag for instance because people often ask about that and I give a look inside and uh, yeah anyway here I am outside this mansion big house place thingy. I say my favorite thing about it is that the ceilings if you can kind of ah, see inside there are like really high so even when my berm is at full extension I don't need to uh, close it up down well when we're in like the lounge area so of course when we're doing like a shot just a little bit earlier in the bathroom yeah I have to like close it up and make it shorter but often for like many of these scenes I can just leave it at full extension because it's quite nice because often you're doing these shots that you need the full extension of the boom to be able to do what the shot needs but of course as soon as it's the shot finishes you want to take a bit of a rest and you want to just sort of lift up the boom and have it pointing straight up of course you can't because the ceiling's in the way unless you're outdoors anyway I just thought uh yeah I like places with really really high ceilings um yeah anyway um I've gone for a bit of a trip out of Auckland to uh, down here in the mighty Waikato. That's why I'm wearing my Chiefs rugby jersey. Um, and I actually went in a part of Waikato called Cambridge. Nothing to do with the UK Cambridge though. It's uh, near Hamilton. Anyway, uh, my bag over here, I will show... Oh yeah, there's another thing. Funny about thing, thing about this short film. It's entirely in Hendai. So um, yeah, I did a whole feature film back in... Australia that was in Hindi and uh, so yeah that was a fun experience um, and yeah it's been a while since I've uh, I guess done one that's entirely in foreign language although there was that uh, Nazi World War II film I did fairly recently and that was all in German but I didn't have too much dialogue recorded so yeah it's the first time I've gone and recorded like a full-on day after day of like all this language of which I've got like pff, no idea what they're saying so it adds a little fun challenge but um yeah you treat it a bit like maybe when you're doing a doco you know even if it's just you struggle to remember the exact words on which you need to do the timing of your cues you just kind of you leave the burden on one person and you're looking at the other person and just sort of looking at them you can often like sort of see in the eyes when they're about to talk and that helps like cueing in it it's really good for you yeah, docos or improvisations yeah, because besides, I think they're often going a little bit off script anyway, so it's not, there's a little bit of improvisation there going on anyway. And, um, oh yes, another similarity this has with the um, Hindi film I did over in Australia, that, that feature, is, yeah, we didn't have any lighting crew, and this also doesn't have any lighting crew, so we're always just using like the default lights that there are in the scene, which so often, and has been so today, is just like, there's overhead lights, but also like, a, like not a single overhead light, but several multiple overhead lights. And additionally, another similarity is they're always shooting multi-camera with like three cameras at once. And there's often, um, you, know, you know, a gimbal camera as well moving around the scene. So yeah, when you've got multiple overhead lights like this, rather than like a more traditional, you know, three point lighting system or whatever, um, yeah, those overhead lights really screw up with quite bad shadows for the boom. And then of course you're shooting with the middle cameras, often with wides, it really leaves you nowhere, nowhere to hide with the shadows that you could, you know, like, oh, it's okay, I'm having shadows over here, but that, that's out of shot. So this is how I get in, into the scene to uh, boom the, to boom the actors, but um, no, no such luck when you're shooting with this style. Oh well, I mean, like, you boom what you can, and the rest of the time you're living on your labs, living or dying on your labs. Luckily, it's mostly just living. Uh, my labs have been sounding really good all day, so no worries there. But yeah, sometimes, of course, you might come across a costume or, you know, that, that the labs are not going to work out well. Oh yeah, that's not, still sitting up in there. Anyway, back onto my bag that I was going to give a quick overview. So, uh, flick it round this way, and hey, so here I have my, oh, let's open up this exposure quickly. There we go. So this here's um, my Orca Aura 30 bag that i am talked about before. In fact, I have a whole unboxing about it even. And um, let's adjust focus a little bit, see if I can. Maybe go there. Um, anyway, talking. Uh, so, what was I saying? This is an Orca OR30 bag. And so, yeah, I've actually now used it for quite a while since I unboxed it. And my general feeling about it is um, sometimes I feel like the bag is a little bit too small. Sometimes I feel like the bag is a little bit too big and it's 
more science than I really need. But most of the time I'm really liking it and I reckon the fact that, you know, in case you feel like it's a bit too big, a bit too small, pretty much makes it the perfect size for me now, doesn't it? And welcome back again. Just boosted up my ISO a bit here so I could uh, see inside my dark ends of the bag, seeing as the sun is setting, it's almost the end of our day. So, as I've been saying, that's our Orca OR30 bag and inside I've got the new Zoom F8N. You can see here with my tracks that I've got armed. We've got, um, I labelled, you know, my boom track, boom track 1. That is um, my AKG CK93 boom. And uh, yeah, because my 63 got damaged, so. Oh, well, I'm using my 90, CK93 now, but um, yeah, that it's, it's, sounds nice too. And then um, we've got there Samir, who's the lead character guy. And then we've got uh, Yude and Nikita, but they're wrapped, so they're not armed, those tracks. And then I've got my boom safety running. And then we've uh, got Priva, um, the, the wife of the lead character. And uh, what did I say? So I've got here, um, so where are they? Samir is uh, this um, Sony receiver. You know, I, I really, really like the Sony UW um, PD11s. And one of the handy features is, of course, they've got these lights on the top. So I can see because they're both on that not only is this receiver on, but also um, his one is on as well. It hasn't gone flat or I forgot to turn it on or whatever. So just at a glance, looking down the bag, you, you get quite a bit of information quickly. Oh, you can see I've got a bongo tie. Bongo tie is always handy for different things and this helps make sure it uh, doesn't like fall out or whatever when, when I lean over. Um, I've got another one here just sitting in the bag, but uh, that's not actually turned on or anything, but you know, my receiver is sitting over with my batteries, so um, yeah, if I need to throw another one, it's ready to go. I've also got my Electrosonics UCR 10D here. Um, oh, but I've got the receiver with me here, so if I do suddenly surprise, we've got another um, uh, actor jumping in the scene. I'm all ready to go. I've already got one spare receiver at hand, or if I want to like, throw down a plant lav, um, all ready to go. And um, yeah, so. I'm going to say, um, yeah, I'm fairly, fairly fan of the UCR 10Ds from Lichasonics. I've got maybe like four or five of them, four of them. Because, um, yeah, the 200 series really does give you like your best bang for buck value. Um, aside from the only real downside is their weight. And the, the UCR 10Ds, uh, not the most recent one from the 200 series, so like the second most recent, because I think the UCR 10 11s a little bit more recent and they've got like a little LCD display on the top which is handy um, but uh, yeah that's uh, the, but these are quite a bit cheaper than 2 11s and what I do like about them is that they run off four AA batteries so you don't need to like put out with 9 volts quite so much so that's actually quite an attractive feature about these so that they, they run off um, AA batteries if you want to. Um, Cool, anyway, carrying on. So here at the back, uh, on the side pocket, I have got my battery that's charging all of this. I'm using a Sony, B well not an actual genuine Sony, it's a, it's a clone, a copy, it's a, uh, it's a Sony BPU-60 battery. And you can see, hey, I've still got two bars out of four left, and that's from powering you know, this bag all day long. So really it's kind of overkill, I mean probably, could have really used one of my BPU-30 batteries, which is small and light, and just swapped it over. And you can see I've got this um, plate on the top that has a D-tap down there and up here, high rose connection. So I can take one of those, and take in the high rose at the moment, um, and setting that into the high rose input on the F8N. Um, oh yeah, it's nice to have, like sometimes your cable is different color, like this is a blue. We're trying to follow where our cable goes from another place. It makes it quick and easy to do. Oh yeah, and look, that's the Aperture A lav that I'm currently talking into that's being fed into my Panasonic G6. Um, okay, what else is in my bag here? So in this side pocket, I'll t take it out. Oh, I've got another bongo, bongo cable here. You never know when they're gonna be handy and come in to be useful. And um, I've got, uh, this is another waste belt just ready to use, just in case, for whatever. Um, this is a taller. Makeup wipe, um, 
this nice soft cotton, so if I'm having trouble with a, a costume, rubbing against it, get some nice soft cotton in there instead. Um, this is in here. Uh, the lab. Oh, got a bit of cotton wool for basically the same purpose. And of course, I got a couple of different kinds of tape. This is like really good. Oh, look at this side. Ah, really good, uh, strong tape. This is yeah, medical tape. It's, it's just it will stick on a person all day long. You don't need to worry about it coming loose so much. I mean, I don't know, unless they get like in a fight or whatever, some really active scene. This uh, tape is like a bit soft on people, doesn't quite hurt so much if they're allergic to this kind or whatever. But this, this, this white kind kind of gets them stuck a bit more quickly. Anyway, different kinds of tape. Uh, what else am I saying? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, over here, the, oh, I'll turn this on. This is um, the Electrosonics UCR 190. So it's a little bit older one, and it's only um, a single frequency. It doesn't have frequency diversity. Um, so I really would not recommend buying this one at all, unless you just set it a stupidly cheap price. You're know, like, why not? And that's kind of, I guess, the reason I've got it, because it's uh, so cheap, why not? I couldn't say no to it. And um, that's what uh, Privia is wearing at the moment. Um, so yeah, but I mean, obviously, because it's isn't frequency diverse, you need to like check that the frequency is okay before using it. But way out here in the Waikato, right, I've, I've had zero issues with it all day long. And you know, and still like Electrosonics one, and it sounds really nice. And I need to head in quickly, so I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna say, what else is in my bag? Oh yeah, that's just coming in here via one of these um, flat XLR connections, it's sort of a stretchy one. Anyway, uh, this is a side pocket, got one more waistband, and uh, that's enough about the bag. See ya, trying to go do the last scene of the day. I forgot one last thing, really, really important thing that you should always have in your bag and you should definitely not forget to have. Batteries. So uh, yeah, got a 9 volt battery sitting in my bag as well. And of course I carry them inside these boxes because you don't want to hit the 9 volts against each other, otherwise bad things happen. And I uh, also got some AA batteries in my pocket as well. So yeah, don't forget to always have those because you want to go rushing off to get the AA batteries or whatever, 9 volts, you want to have them with you right now when you need them to change a battery. No time wasted. And on that point I shall go back to waiting for them to be ready to do this last shoot. Oh yeah! Also, we're shooting on three cannons, and I'm put each of my tentacles on one. So I'm, this is my first time I'm using the Tentacle Sync E's, the new ones I just got. So uh, yeah, it's fun. And uh, enough of that. Time to uh, do some recording. <laughs>